Somebody just emailed me and said, have you ever disassembled a flat top atomic? And the answer is, no, I haven't. Um, but I've got several of them and I'm gonna disassemble one now to see what it looks like inside. Basically the flat top atomics, there's fundamentally two types of flat head atomic. There's a standard size one and there's a much, much rarer, smaller size one. Um, these are two Milano ones here, but um, when I bought this, I had no idea that it was smaller because on the eBay picture, it just looked the same size. So I was a bit surprised to find that they actually did a much smaller atomic. So there it is. The difference between the flathead atomics, which are much, much earlier, um, or the earliest form of atomic, and the later atomics, like this, for example, are several fold. The most obvious difference is that is the way that they were cast. These later atomics all have a casting bung here, and the actual body of the machine is one solid piece of aluminium. Whereas on the flathead atomics, they have no casting bung here, and the actual casting, effectively the casting bung, is the is the top section. So let's just have a look and see what. Um, what these look like when you disassemble them. Um, each atomic, flathead atomic you're going to come across is going to be slightly different. They've got different group handles. That's a different group handle to that. And then you've got this style of group handle here, which is hollow. So they come in a whole variety of group handles. They'll also come in a whole variety of um, shapes at the end there. That's one kind of shape. Another kind of shape, very, very, oops, very pronounced teardrop shape there. And on the later atomics, a much less pronounced teardrop shape. The next thing on the older flathead atomics is the steam knob. Um, these are often cracked, but if you've got a steam log like this, this does actually have a spring and this sort of um, steam release valve inside it the later rubber seals will fit that style of atomic however the very early steam knobs like this you'll notice don't have any um steam release valve in there and they have a completely different fittings etc so if you do buy a very early um machine bear in mind that if this bit is knackered or missing you're not going to be able to get a replacement um or fix it so Let's have a little look. Underneath, um, there is a variety of different mechanisms. You generally have three screws here holding the top head on, and then you'll either have no screw there or you will have a screw in the middle. Okay, but you don't actually need to undo that screw there to get the head off. Okay, so this machine here, it's actually the very first Atomic I ever bought, and it cost me an absolute fortune at the time. The reason being, I didn't realise this when I bought it, the reason being that it's actually a very, very early Atomic. If you do have a flathead Atomic, have a little look just under the steam knob there. This shows you it's number 19, okay? And if you turn it over on this particular Atomic, if you look very carefully engraved, with the person who actually made it. So, what I've done on this Atomic is I've undone the three screws. Now you'll be very lucky if after 50 years or however long your Atomic is that these screws actually come out. But this one, they did come out. And if you manage to get them out, just put a dab of oil or grease or something on them when you put them back in to help you or someone else in the future. When you take out these screws, you're actually left with the head which is this part here and the head comes as one comes as one whole attachment now i did actually once talk to somebody who was um who had one of these atomics and had laser cut some spare seals so actually i do know never i've never used them because i don't use these flathead atomics very often apart from the little one which i use as a single shot for people who don't um, take milk in their coffee but these seals you can't buy them anymore um, so if you're leaking around there you would need to basically get a CNC machine or I suppose if you've got a very thin piece of rubber you could cut your own seal but they don't make them anymore um, these seals here 
are the same size as the standard atomic seals and you can either get them from Bond Trading on Oxford Street in Sydney, Australia or they're actually the same size as the Bialetti seal. In fact, that is a Bialetti seal there and Bialetti machines are the kind of hexagonal machines that screw um, together, stovetop machines that screw together and they've got white seals like that whereas the atomic seals, whereas well, the atomic seals will be will be food grade silicon seals like that. That was a bit old, but then um, basically they look like that. Okay, so once you have um, taken the head off, you'll be able to basically take this out. And when I took this machine out, this is a Hungarian machine here. And the badges on these machines tend to be the most valuable thing. This is, as I say, a very rare Hungarian. Not only has it got a very rare badge on it, but it has a very um, distinctive steam knob on it as well. And it has the old style jug like that, very retro. And plus this one's been used for so many years that the actual, um, what's it called, whatever that's called, basket is actually melded into this and doesn't come out. When I first got this, as I th say, it was one of the first machines I ever got, I actually thought it came as one piece. I didn't realize it had just been melded in there through years of use. Okay, so if you're very lucky when you're disassembling one of these flat top machines, you'll be able to basically unscrew this. And on these machines here, you can see when I took this one out, I saw something that I wasn't expecting, which is quite common. You see that hole there, that's just corrosion. And that's not good because that basically means this coffee machine is not gonna be working as it should, because instead of the water going up through there, it's actually gonna be going up through there. And the consequence of that is basically the height that that tube sits above the bottom of the machine, normally they on the flat top ones and on the non steam arm machines, they sit right on the bottom. So if you put in one cup of water, you'll get one cup of coffee. Whereas on the steam arm machines, they sit up a centimeter or somewhere off the bottom. And that bit of water that's left in the bottom is what's used for steam. But on this machine, you can see that there'll always be water left in it if you were to use it because water will be going through that hole. It's quite common for the aluminium to corrode in that way. Now, if you do disassemble your machine like that and you think or you decide that you want to um, clean it, you can get along to Wilkinson's or Wilco's if you live in England and buy yourself a set of these brushes for a pound. You get a brass one, a steel one and just a normal fibre one. And you want to use a brush one to clean aluminium. Aluminium is very soft and you can just clean that up, bring it back to life, get rid of all of that gunk using a little brass brush. So that's about all there is to say about the flap tops. There's a huge variety of them um, in terms of different badges. Somebody actually wrote a book on atomic badges and sent it to me, would you believe? But um, that's what the machine looks like when it's completely disassembled so that would have come out of the cast in one piece like that quite extraordinary